Brock Stars! Wow, today was just like the best day starting distance learning with all of you. I was so happy to see so many of you, hear your sweet voices, and get to talk a little, and I'm really excited to do it again tomorrow. So, since today was such a great day, I thought I would read a book that was about the opposite of a great day, and that book is... Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Viorst and illustrated by Ray Cruz. And once again, I had a really great day. I did not have a terrible day today, but we'll read this story anyways. Gwen, are you ready to listen to your story? Uh-huh. She said uh-huh from across the room. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. When I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick found a Junior Undercover Agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box, but in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. <gasps> Should we show them the pictures, Gwen? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even noticed. I could tell it was going to be a terrible Horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. And at counting time, she said I left out 16. Well, who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and that Albert Moyle was his next best friend and that I was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream part falls off the cone and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag. And Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds. And Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was, because after school my mom took us all to the dentist and Dr. Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week and I'll fix it, said Dr. Fields. Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot, and while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I started crying because of the mud, Nick said I was a crybaby. And while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, 
My mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and for fighting. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I told everybody. And no one even answered. Maybe you felt you, like you've had a day like this before. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. And Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. And Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes. And then the shoe man said, we're all sold out. They made me buy plain old white ones. But they can't make me wear them. Gwen, are you coming back? Can you say hi? <gasps> say hi! Hi! When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I... <laughs> are you talking? He said that I couldn't play with his copying machine. But I forgot. And he also said to watch out for the books on his desk. And I was as careful as I could be, except for, well, my elbow. And he also said don't fool around with his phone, but... I think I called Australia. My dad said, please don't pick him up from the office anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Hi. Hello. Oh, you got Mama's necklace. You got my necklace. Ah, I've been caught by a Gwen. You silly goose. Silly goose, wait just a second. You wait a second? Oh, here. Do you want that? Look at, we're almost done. We've got a couple pages left. There were lima beans for dinner, and I hate lima beans. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. Do you want to see my necklace? Uh huh. Do you want to see my. Whoa! Here you go. Do you want to see that? I'm gonna play with that. There you go, Gwen. My bath was too hot. I got soap in my eyes. My marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. <laughs> Are you gonna put my necklace on? It looks very pretty on you. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow that he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. And the cat wanted to sleep with Anthony, not me. It has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says that some days are like that. Even in Australia. I like this book because it reminds me that even though there are bad days, sometimes everybody has bad days and bad days always go away. I think one's ready to say bye-bye. You say bye-bye, Brockstars. Bye-bye. Bye, Brockstars. Love you. We'll see you tomorrow.